Well, hello, family and friends, and welcome, welcome, welcome again for another opportunity to dig into the Word of God as we worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ Himself, our Lord and Savior. Thank you. If this is the first time you're joining us today, just want to say thank you for tuning in. Today we're celebrating Palm Sunday. Praise God. Uh, Palm Sunday is the the day when, you know, Jesus rode into Jerusalem and he made this triumphant entry, uh, came in on a donkey. All of the people put down palms, they put down their clothes so that he can ride through on this donkey as their proclaimed king of kings. And so, you know, I felt like that was very timely as we, we continue to go through this message and this study on Nehemiah and how do we make our life count. Last week, we started to look at people and your purpose. How, does, how do people play into your purpose and in your life? How did people play into the purpose and the life of Jesus Christ himself? And so we're going to dig into that today and learn from God's word. But I want to start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We don't take it for granted, not one time, Lord. We don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. The opportunity that you've given me to share your word with the world. And Father, I pray that this word will not return to you null and void, but it will achieve the purpose with which you send it to achieve. And thank you, Lord, for good ground. I pray that ears are anointed and opened right now, hearts are ready to receive your word, that it may bring forth fruit in our lives. And it's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, get your Bibles. Let's dig into this word and grow from it. Amen? Amen. So we're still, like I said, in that series of how do we make our lives count, looking at Nehemiah. Last week we looked at how people affect our purpose, and we said that no matter what you do in, your, in, in life on, on earth, you know, you're going to need people to come into uh, agreement with you. You're going to need people to help you further your mission, further your cause, be companions with you, and they're going to be good people that are going to help you do that, but we also th said that they're going to be bad people that are going to come against everything you try to do to better yourself, to improve yourself, to fulfill the will of God in your life, and today I'm going to wrap up by looking at the ugly people. <laughs> people are going to do some ugly things in life to destroy your mission and your vision. I love what Jim Collins said in his book, Going From Good to Great. He said that it's imperative if you're going to be successful to get the right people on the bus, in the right seats and in the right position. And, it, you know, this concept isn't anything new. This concept transcends anything that you're going to do in life, in business, your personal life, your family life, your relationship. If you're aspiring to, to lose weight, <laughs> you're decided to exercise, you're going to need people. People are going to encourage you and people are going to discourage you. People, you can't run from them. <laughs> you can't live with them sometimes and you can't live without them if you're going to fulfill a purpose and a call on your life. Amen? So let's continue digging into it. Um, last time we looked at the, uh, the bad people, uh, Sandballad and these other clowns, these characters that have came into Nehemiah's life and, and the Jews that were, were helping him to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. And we said that, you know, these bad people, just like good people, so good people, uh, they're going to be good people that are close to you. We can call these folks that are going to be in your inner circle. And then they're, they're good people that are going to be on the outer circle, the outer courts, and they're going to all help you fulfill your purpose. They all play different roles and they have different responsibilities. They bring different things to the table. With bad people, you're also going to have, <laughs> believe it or not, the inner circle of bad people. And then, believe it or not, you're going to have the outer circle. So last time we looked at the outer circle, we looked at people that are just going to see the things that's going on in your life, hear the things that you want to do in your life. You want to go back to school. You want to go get another degree. You want to go to a, a, you know, a technical, a vocational school. You want to you get a mentor. You want to speak with someone, anything that you want to do to increase your life and do something better, 
you're going to have people out there in the world in the outer courts that are just going to be hating on you. They're just going to be shooting arrows at you, discouraging you, trying to do any and everything that they can against you to stop you for, for, from fulfilling the purpose and the call of God on your life. But now I want to take it a step further today. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have bad people that are on the inner circle that are going to be, <laughs> you know, in your group of friends, the friends that you so-called friends. Guess what? Some of them are going to be talking about you behind your back. They're on your inner circle, people on your team, people on the team at your job, the team in your church could be anywhere. You're going to have bad people on the inner circle. And so I want to, I want to demonstrate this to you today from Nehemiah. I'm going to be looking at Nehemiah chapter 4, starting at verse 10. So the scripture says, Then Judah, Judah represents the people, said, that's the people of Israel. Judah said, The strength of the laborers are failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. You know, you've got to be careful as these outside influences start to come against your purpose and your call. It's hard for, for people that who were once with you to stay the course. Because as they keep hearing this negative information, they keep hearing what's going on out in the marketplace. If they're not focused, they can become discouraged. One translation of this verse, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10 says, the people that were good people, that were on task and were on purpose, now they started to complain. Why? Because those negative seeds that those people in the outer courts we're throwing and casting at them. They're starting to take a little bit of root. And they're wondering if, you know, are we really going to be able to do this thing? Are we really going to be able to accomplish this thing that God called us to do? But verse 11 says, And our adversaries said, They will neither know nor see anything. So there's some gossiping and rumors going around. Um, scripture says, Till we come into their midst. That's what I want you to see. And kill them and cause the work to cease. I'm going to read that this time without stopping. But I want to go back to verse 11 again. It says, And our adversaries said, They will neither know nor see anything till we come in to their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have bad people that are trying to come into the inner courts of what you're doing. Spies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you're going to have people that are on the outside that are seeing you making progress. See, the, the, the Jews had started to build the wall. They're doing a good thing. They've got the wall built up to half the level. They're all on the same mind. Yeah, you got the outside people spewing things that it's not going to work. If a fox stands on it, the wall's going to fall down. You got people hating but now you got people trying to get into the midst, in the middle of the situation. You've got people trying to come into the middle of your relationship. You've got people trying to come into the middle of your church. You've got people trying to come into the middle of your business. And they're spies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nehemiah is, is seeing here that these people are trying to come into the midst. They're trying to pretend to be their friends. And they have one objective, one objective only. It's to seek to kill them and kill the thing that they're trying to do. The God-given purpose that they've been called to do, that they've made progress to do. The enemy is so, this is what uh, in Ephesians 6, the Bible talks about the wiles or the strategies of the devil, the enemy. The devil will stop at no cause to end your purpose, to kill and destroy you, but not only you, but your purpose. See, the devil doesn't care if you just walk around and just wander around in the wilderness for your entire life. But when you decide to choose to per pursue the purpose and the call on God's life, you just threw a bullseye on your back. And so he uses people as well <laughs> as God uses people. God uses people to fulfill his purpose and his call. Well, guess what? The enemy uses people to fulfill his purposes, and his calls as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a war against the kingdom of darkness, and we are the kingdom of light. And so the enemy is starting to now use people from the outside. He's going to bring them in, 
close to Jeremiah, to Nehemiah and um, the team that's rebuilding this wall, because if he could get people on the inside of the purpose and the mission, then he can destroy it. It's like a cancer. Once it gets on the inside, it starts to uh, bounce off of the, the, the other cells and contaminate the other cells and try to convince them to turn on, on the body and, and join the attack against the body. Ladies and gentlemen, the bad will try to come in and destroy the thing. And the first thing that they're going to do, the weapon that they're going to utilize is fear. They're going to utilize fear. They're going to, they're going to say, hey, you don't want to really go and do that thing. You don't really want to step out on faith and, 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 tr and develop yourself. This thing isn't going to work. What are you trying to do? Why do you think you're better than us? Why do you want to go and get that promotion? Why do you want to better yourself? Why don't you just stay at level one for the rest of your life? You don't really want to go to school. That's going to take time. You've got to go study. You've got to focus. You've got to have homework. You don't want to have homework now. You're 30 years old. That's too old. You're too old. Your brain doesn't work anymore. You, you know, you don't want to lose your job. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be careful of who you let on the inner courts. You've got to be careful and exercise discernment. See, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You've got to exercise discernment, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you and help you with discernment when people try to come in from the outside appearing to be helpful, appearing to have bought into your mission and vision. When not in the front of your face, they're talking about your mission and vision. They're questioning if you've got what it takes to get this thing done. They're planting those negative seeds uh, about the body uh, within those ones that have bought in, within those that have, have bought into the purpose and the mission. They're planting those negative seeds. Child of God, you've got to use the gift of the Holy Spirit to be able to see. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you eyes to see. These enemies, these bad people that are trying to come out from the outer courts into the inner courts of your life to destroy your mission and your vision. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. So now I want to dig into the, the last category or the last flavor of people. I said people come in three different flavors. <laughs> they come in the good flavor, the bad flavor. And then the ugly flavor. That's right. Watch this. In Nehemiah chapter 6, turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 6. This one just blew me away, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this, listen, the enemy does not want us to win, but he is a defeated foe. And so he is going to pull out all of the stops. Everything that he can do to stop you, he is going to stop you. But I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to encourage you today. Listen, if God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody can stop us. Once we come together, once we set ourselves to do something for the kingdom of God, for the king of kings, who or what can stop us? The only thing that can stop us is us. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter 6. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 10. Listen to this. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Metabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God. They're coming to the church, ladies and gentlemen. Within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple. For they are coming to kill you, Nehemiah. <laughs> Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. Verse 11 says, and I said, should such a man as I flee? Oh, I love I love the boldness for the purposes of God. Nehemiah says, should a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. That's a leader you want to be behind. God is on him. He's got a purpose and a call from God, and he doesn't care what anybody has got to say. He's not moved by the haters. He's not moved by these other jokers and clowns that are kind of coming into his midst to to stop him from getting something done. And watch, watch how ugly this gets. Verse 12 says, Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all. 
but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah, remember these guys, and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. <laughs> Let me summarize to you in our terminology what's going on here. So Nehemiah, not only does he have the good people, they're working toward the wall, they're working toward the purpose. He's got the bad people, they're putting posts on social media, that they're taking pictures of the wall on their phone, they're laughing at them, they're telling them that it's not structurally sound, it's going to fall down. They're spies trying to come into the, to the body and, and confuse them. But on top of all of that, now you've got the ugly situation. You've got a situation where Sanballat, these guys, have paid for someone to go prophesy. <laughs> they, pay, they paid someone. They paid this, these, these funny name people here, uh, these informers, to prophesy to Nehemiah to quit or else he's going to get killed. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be very careful. This is again why I said the Holy Spirit is your friend. You've got to be very careful of what prophecy you listen to, what prophecy someone has told you, what person has told you that they have heard from God when they don't know his voice from apple butter. <laughs> you've got to take it very, because the enemy will pull out all stops. If he's got to get ugly to destroy you and destroy your purpose, he is going to get ugly. Sanballat paid a prophet to go and prophesy to Nehemiah that he needs to stop building this wall. I know we've all heard it before. You know, you're, you're sitting in church and somebody comes up and, and don't get me wrong. I, I believe in prophecy. I believe I've received many uh, prophetic words that I knew were from God. And I received many prophetic words that I knew were from the pit of hell. And you, child of God, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You have got to discern because God put it here in his word that, listen, he's, the enemy isn't going to stop at anything to stop you. If he's got to bring someone who may have eaten too much Taco Bell with hot and spicy sauce one night to come into you and tell you they've got a word for you, that this person's supposed to be your husband, and this and that is supposed to happen to you, child of God, you need to confirm that with the Holy Spirit. You need to speak to the Holy Spirit. You need to exercise discernment. You need to exercise wisdom. Don't just take any word anybody just told you and go run with it. You need to test that thing out. Make sure that's true. Make sure that's pure and it's from God because the enemy will get ugly on you. I heard many people say, I believe that God told me to leave this church and go to that church and jump over to that church. And what's amazing to me is I find that people that say that don't ever find themselves in church anymore. <laughs> so they've heard a word or someone has given them a word from God, but it pushes them away from God. Ladies and gentlemen, just like in this example in Nehemiah, when someone is, is speaking to you and they give you a word and it, 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 it evokes fear, it's a first sign that it's not from God. If that word scares you, it doesn't exhort you and encourage you, and it doesn't give you a hope and a future, that's not from God. That's straight from the pit of hell. That's sent to plant a seed to destroy you and destroy your vision. <laughs> I love the great uh, Maya Angelou. And the quote that Maya Angelou says, and it sticks into my mind all of the time when I first meet people, Maya Angelou says and suggests that when you meet someone for the first time and they show you who they are, you better believe them. <laughs> Whenever you have that deep down in your gut, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you as that person is speaking to you, you better believe what the Holy Spirit is telling you because the Holy Spirit is protecting you from people that are trying to destroy you and get rid of you. Amen? Praise God. Boy, that's a good one. I could stay on that for about six, seven hours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you, you got to believe the Holy Spirit. You know, I was thinking about, as, uh, as we talked about on Palm Sunday, Jesus in John chapter 15, verse 18, Jesus himself says, I want to read this to you. This won't take me much time, but this is so important. Child of God, I don't want you to be discouraged. 
I don't want you to be in fear because these attacks are going to come against you. I don't want you to quit and give up on the mission that God has given you, the call that God has placed on your life, but I want you to be bold and confident and know the ploys and the steps of the enemy. See, if we know what he's going to (laughs) do, we've already got it figured out. We already know it's a part of the strategy. It's a part of the process. A part of the process, you got to settle this in your spirit. A part of the process and you fulfilling the purpose and the call in your life is that the enemy is going to attack you. But is it going to be worth it? Oh, yeah. Because the kingdom of God will prevail if we can prevail. If we can rely on the Holy Spirit, we can fulfill what God called for us in our lives. Amen? I'm going to leave that alone. (laughs) John 15 and 18, look at what God said. This is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself said, if the world hates you, you need to know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. See, the world is, uh, the Bible says that Satan is the God, little g-o-d, of this world. You are of a kingdom. You are of the kingdom of heaven. You are a kingdom citizen sent here and deployed on earth to do something specifically for God. Yet because you are not of the world, see, you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. This is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior himself telling us that, look, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. You got to get you got to get ready for that. That's what I want you to don't get soft on me. <laughs> don't 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 get soft on me and quit. People are going to talk about you. People are going to talk about me. We got to just let it slip off of our back like water off of a duck's back. Listen, if people ain't talking about you, you ain't doing nothing. If you're not the conversation at some dinners that you hadn't been invited to, you're not doing anything. If nobody's talking about you, you ain't doing nothing. If people are talking about you, use that as a check mark to know that you're doing something, to know that you're on purpose to making your life count. See, Nehemiah was being talked about. Nehemiah was uh, at the brunt of a lot of conversations. Nehemiah was on everybody's hit list. But he didn't let that stop him from making his life count count. Praise God. So Palm Sunday, I want to show you how Jesus Christ and Nehemiah, see the principles apply to everybody. They apply to Nehemiah. Let's see how it it applied to uh, Jesus Christ in Luke 19. Luke 19, starting at verse 34. You know, we're celebrating Palm Sunday. You got your palm, wave it around. Or if you got your hand, you can wave that around as well. As your palm, but so, uh, so in Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 34. So Jesus tells his disciples to go out and go get this colt. And in verse 34, it said, and they said, the Lord has need of him, this colt that Jesus sent him for. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt. And they set Jesus on the colt, on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all of the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God in heaven. The highest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus Christ about to be uh, crucified, go to his purpose to finish his work. And, and, and the week before, just before he's crucified and he, he grows into this excruciating passion, all of these people, the multitude of people that had worked with him, that had been with him this entire time that he was on earth, this entire time that he was performing all of these mighty works and doing all of these um, works of God, these miracles. While he was doing all of these things, the people were worshiping him. They were glorifying him, saying, Hosanna in the highest, glory to God most high. They were uh, treating him as a king. They were putting their clothes, they were taking their jackets off, putting their jackets on the road, taking palms, resting the palms on the ground to display and show him that he is a king, that he is appreciated, that they love him, that they honor him, that they worship him. And ladies and gentlemen, the outer courts, (laughs) 
those ones that were on the outside worshiping him one day, in one week they would be trying to kill him and saying crucify him. He even had one on the inner court that got changed. He was a spy. He was someone that was on the inside, but he was really from the outside. And ladies and gentlemen, this happened to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This happened to Nehemiah. I can list tons and tons of people who were trying to fulfill their purpose, were trying to do what God called them to do, but opposition from people came. Help from people came. My point is that people are going to come. People are uh, paramount in your purpose. People play a role in your purpose, but you're going to have good people, you're going to have bad people, and you're going to have the ugly people as well. Amen? But what's important is that Jesus said, even after he was crucified, he said in Luke 22, 23, Verse 34, he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They just don't know. They just don't know that they're being used by the enemy. They just don't know. But listen, child of God, if we pursue, if we persist, if we move through the judgment, if we move through what uh, offenses people are throwing at us, if we pursue our purpose, if we continue to be joined on to a purpose and share our gifts and talents toward a kingdom purpose, nothing can stop us. Even though we may go through some trials, even though we may go through some testing, we can still fulfill the purpose on our life until we can stand before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, one day and say, it is finished. Our purpose is finished. We didn't stop. We didn't quit. We didn't hold a grudge against the people that were slandering us and were bad-mouthing us. No, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't worry about that. We just used those haters for motivation because it's all about God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you that you give us purpose, Lord. I thank you that you give us courage, Lord. I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind, Lord, that we can fulfill the thing that you've called us to do. Father, no weapon that's formed against us will prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment, we condemn it. And Father, I pray for all of those under the sound of my voice right now that may have been discouraged, that may have been um, just wanting to quit, Lord, flat out, just quit. Father, I pray that this word is a word of encouragement to them, that they would be encouraged, that they may be enthused about the purpose, about the things that they are connected with, about the the places that you have called them to be and the people that you have called them around to be around, that they're good people. Father, I pray that you give us eyes and discernment to see those people that are not for us, that are against us, and that you would give us wisdom to separate ourselves from them so that we can fulfill the call that you had our, have and had on our lives from the beginning of time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Well, I just want to leave you with a few takeaways from this particular message and the message series. These will help you because, see, we can, we can get these messages and don't do anything about it or remember what we're supposed to do and it, it, it won't be any benefit to us. So the first thing I want you to know is that you cannot fulfill your purpose (laughs) without people. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You cannot do anything significant in life without the help of other people. Amen? I want you to remember this, that people come in three main flavors. I call it the good, the bad, (laughs) and the ugly. Amen? And they all have their purpose, and they're part of your purpose. I want you to remember that just as God uses people, Satan as well, he will use people. He's just a copycat. He can't come up with anything different. So he's going to copy the same process. I want you to remember that those haters, they can be used as your motivators. But listen, it's not just to prove those haters wrong. It's about the kingdom. See, it's all about God's kingdom. Those haters are just speed bumps along the way to your success to you fulfilling what God has called you to be. 
in your life. Amen. I also want to encourage you that when that opposition arises, I want you to keep your eyes on the wall. Keep your eyes on that thing that God has placed in your heart to do. Keep your eyes on the wall. You get a, a negative report. You get a, a, a bad comment. You hear this is being said about you or that's being said about you. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. You keep your eye on the wall. Keep your eye on the thing that God calls you to build and do. If you've got to separate yourself and be in isolation for a little while, go ahead and do that. But keep your eye on the wall. Don't let the opposition make you quit. Amen? And then most importantly, I want you to remember that as a born-again child of God, you've got the Holy Spirit himself, the same spirit, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You've got the spirit. That spirit has gifts. That spirit is God himself. He's, he is God. You've got God on the inside of you that can see past fake people, that can see genuine people, people that are for you, people that are against you. The Holy Spirit will teach you and show you all things. I need you to just believe him and trust his voice. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, if you today have, have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to, to do that. I want you to know that God is for you. I don't care what you've heard about uh, needing to qualify or people may have told you that you don't qualify to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, that you're not good enough. Look at your life. Look at all the bad things that you have done. Listen, none of us qualify. But the good news is that our King, our King, He's a servant. He paid the price. He paid the penalty of sin so that we can all be children of God. And if you simply believe that, I just want you to confess with your mouth. Say this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for being my king. Thank you for dying and being obedient to die for my sins. Just as you didn't deserve to die, Heavenly Father, I don't deserve to have my sins forgiven. But because of Jesus Christ, because of him dying and being raised again and being seated at your side right now, by faith I confess his name as Lord with my mouth. I believe in my heart. I receive your Holy Spirit. And I call myself by faith a child of God. Listen to me. If you said that prayer, the Bible says that old things are passed away and all things have become new. Please send us a comment. Please connect with us so that we can help you along that spiritual journey that you can be discipled into being all that God's created you to be because he has created you with a purpose and he's got a call on your life. Amen? Amen. Well, as you go into this up and coming week, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ himself bless you. And I pray that he keeps you. I pray that he makes your way and your path straight. I pray that he leads you in the paths of righteousness. I pray that he makes his face every second of every day to shine upon you, to reveal himself to you so you can see how beautiful he is. I pray that he grants you favor in this upcoming week. Favor to you, your family, your children, and your grandchildren. In Jesus' name, I pray that he gives you peace in every area of your life and it's in Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray amen amen praise God bless you until next time I'll see you well, thank you for watching this message I pray that it was a blessing to you subscribe to our YouTube channel follow us on Facebook and Instagram so that you can continue to receive uplifting and encouraging messages just like this one and join us every Saturday at 5 p.m. where we have our fellowship and worship services. And if you feel led to give and sow into this ministry so that we can continue to further the gospel of Jesus Christ, the information is shown below there on your screen where you can mail your giving in or do it online. Thanks again for watching and be blessed.